But Endrick is the special one, and he really is something special. In the last few weeks, he's just been sensational. Palmeiras from nowhere now top of the list to make you think, yeah, Brazil has a good generation of players, much stronger. <laughs> E aí pessoal, o mundo está de olho no menino Mendic e no que ele irá fazer pela seleção brasileira, né? E aqui a ESPN americana bateu um papo sobre ele e também sobre outros jovens, outras boas promessas que ainda estão jogando no Brasileirão, no futebol brasileiro e também debateram né, sobre a nossa atual geração. Enfim, vamos conferir aqui esse papo. How would you compare that with Brazilian youngsters that we've kind of seen over the past 15, 20, 25 years. Is this a, the best crop, a good crop? What kind of crop is it? It's not easy to live in a different country. But it's clearly a country to look at, Brazil, because it's a magnificent supplier of talent. And certainly clubs, English clubs, they are looking to buy from Brazil, direct from Brazil, much more than they were in the past. And the, the way that the market now operates is that the, the big European clubs and the Premier League clubs They're not interested in the best players in Brazilian football. They're interested in the brightest promises. Mm -hmm. They want them as young as possible. So really, 22 has become a kind of cutoff point. And this means that the process happens so quickly. If I could give you the example of the centre-back now at Nottingham Forest, Murilo. He hadn't played first-team football in Brazil before the end of April. Come the end of August... He's a Premier League defender, four mm. months and out. That process happens so quickly with the clubs looking to spot talent. Is Obviously, this is going to be a scattergun approach. Not everyone is going to live up to the expectations. But there are enough there, I think, in this list that I put together to make you think, yeah, Brazil has a good generation of players, much stronger, though, in some positions than in others. Tim, I want to take you back about a decade and to the Paulista, to the Brasileirao at ESPN. We were fortunate enough to have the rights to do commentary on the Brazilian games. And I remember certain games at Santos were delayed. The second half was delayed so that Neymar could come out with various sponsors, products that he had because there were so many people involved in his deal, in him. This is before he'd even gone to Barcelona. And that was the impact then. That was 10 years ago. Is it similar that there's loads of people, agencies, companies invested in these young Brazilian talents knowing they want a piece of the pie when they move to Europe? Or has it moved on slightly? Well, in the case of Neymar, I think I mean, he could have gone much earlier. Yeah, he uh, could have done. Th th they held him back a little mm -hmm. bit. And he went in, in and he could easily have gone two, three, even four years earlier yeah. than he did. And, and part of what you were seeing there was the cost of keeping him, mm -hmm. all of the commercial side that was necessary to pay his wages. And at that time, Santos scrapped their women's team just in order to be able to, 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 uh, to, to, be, afford, to be able to, to afford Neymar. That wouldn't happen these days because he'd already be gone. Yeah. Um, and the European clubs, that they really want them at 18. If they, can, if they could get them younger, that they would. If they could rip them out of the womb, they would. Um, but wow. they, 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 they like them at, at, at 18 if they can. Now, there are pros and cons with that one because you're taking a, a, a young man, often very young for his age, away from his home country. Think of all the changes that you go through at that time. It's hard to go, to go through all those changes in a foreign country. But on balance, the clubs think it's, it's easier to, to, uh, to get the player to adapt to life on the field and off it. Sometimes I worry when these players are loaned out because they've come up the ranks being special. They're the special one. And if they're loaned out to a club that maybe doesn't have a long-term stake in them, they can wither a little bit. Mm. So uh, it, 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 it's a difficult process. You're dealing with human beings. There isn't a one-side-fits-all approach to this. But certainly th 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 there's enough talent there for the clubs to be interested. I'm going to take a look at, at five. Your top five from your Boys from Brazil article. And I think there's 21 in there, but players that we might be seeing soon in Europe. At five, you've got Pablo Maia. He's a 21-year-old central midfielder from Sao Paulo. John Kennedy's at four, not the Celtic assistant manager, Stevie, um, someone who's rather younger than him, a 21-year-old striker from Fluminense, who's done so well with the Libertadores and goals and red cards galore. Number three, you've got Marcos Leonardo, a 20-year-old striker 
from Santos, a two Victor Roque, an 18 year old striker from Atletico Paranaense, who's likely to go to Barcelona, and Endrick, the 17 year old talent from Palmeiras, who's likely and will go to Real Madrid. Of those five, who excites you most? Oh, Endrick is the special one, and he really is something special. He, he, uh, he's a stocky, left footed striker with you, you can, you know, that, that thing that the great player has. He just sees things so quickly. It's almost as if time is slowed down. And you can see that with Endrick. He's got blistering acceleration. He's full of audacity. And he, he came to uh, attention uh, as a 15-year-old, scoring fantastic goals in a very good national under-20 uh, competition. At the age of 15, mm-hmm. uh, he, was, he was put into the, the, the Palmeiras first team last year. He's had some struggles adapting. If we were having this conversation a month ago, we'd be saying, well, yeah, he still hasn't really... In the last few weeks, he's just been sensational. Palmeiras from nowhere, now top of the league, and that's because of him. Uh, so and he, he really is a very, very special talent indeed. So Endrick, I think, is, is really the one to watch. What are you looking for in a youngster? If, if an MLS coach or whoever from Europe, from America, went down to Brazil, what are you most looking for from what you can see during that 90 minutes that you watch? You, I mean, initially you're looking for something something that, that somebody can give your team. Uh, after that, just raw talent. Mm. I mean, unfortunately for Paul and I, the problem we had was the was the size of the wallet we brought. It wasn't quite big <laughs> enough, and so <laughs> and so when you when you're asking questions about young players, you know, they would just look at you and go, "No, you can't touch that. You can't touch that. You can't touch that." I mean, so we were we were kind of we, the mistake we made was going to the wrong places. We we should have gone to a level where we might have got somebody, mm-hmm. because MLS, with all due respect, even for Brazilians who 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 want to get out of wherever they are, you know, they're, they're looking higher than that, and so that was the mistake we made. But as far as looking at talent, I mean, Paul and I came away a little disgruntled, to be honest, because there was so much of it that we could have mm-hmm. we could have got a player who would have been so good for us. But we just couldn't afford them, and that's and that's that's the problem that the majority of scouts, coaches that go down there have is because there is so much talent that unless you've got the money to back it up, you ain't getting close to it. Mm. But as I said, as far as far as you know, apart from seeing the police, um, to be able to go <laughs> and watch young players. Whose desi- the desire is incredible. You know, you're talking about Gabriel cleaning Hendrick out, and that's at the very highest level. Well, these kids, the desire and the way they trained, I mean, this was like electric from the first minute of training to the last second of training. Never mind the games. The, you could see the desire and the look in these kids' faces. I mean, it was so enjoyable to watch because if there's one thing... There's not enough of, in, in my opinion, and, and a lot of the youngsters here, is that that de- desire and determination to be the best. They all want to be the best player that's ever lived. They don't just want to be professional players. They want to be the best. It's great to watch. Tim, when Hendrik goes to Real Madrid, he's got Vinny Jr., he's got Rodrigo, but he's also got Jude Bellingham, who's only 20 as well. Will it be a seamless transition for him? Probably not, no. Uh, and uh, I, I think he'll he'll be brought along slowly and that, 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 that's the way to do it. Yeah. Uh, and one of the advantages of a squad like that is you're not putting too much on him straight away. Uh, 